Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. In the last video, we saw about the two-phase locking protocol and this is a continuation of that video where we are going to see about the different types of variations of the two-phase locking protocol. So, there are three different variations of the two-phase locking protocol. One is called as conservative two-phase locking protocol and the second one is called as strict two-phase locking protocol and the third one is called as rigorous two-phase locking protocol. So, let's see about each of them. So, the first one is conservative two-phase locking protocol. This is also called as static two-phase locking protocol. Static 2PL or two-phase locking protocol. So, in this uh, conservative two-phase locking protocol, it requires that the transaction has to lock all the items it accesses before the transaction begins execution. That means it has to pre-declare its read set and write set. So, in conservative to PL, it requires, requires a transaction to lock all the items it accesses. To lock all the items it accesses before it begins its execution. Before it begins its execution. That means it has to pre-declare its read set and the write set. Now what is the meaning of this read set and write set is? Read set is the set of all the items which the transaction reads. And write set is the set of all the items which the transaction writes. So, it has to pre-declare which set of items it is going to read and which set of items it is going to write. And it has to lock all of them before the transaction starts its execution. That is called as conservative two-phase locking protocol. So, what will happen if any of the pre-declared items which it needs cannot be locked? Then in that case, the transaction will not lock any item. That is, either it has to get all the pre-declared items which it needs and it has to lock them before starting its transaction. If it is not possible, then it will not lock any item and it will wait. It waits, it waits until all the items are available for locking. It waits until all the items are available for locking. Okay, so that is called as conservative two-phase locking protocol. The uh, advantage of this protocol is it is a deadlock free protocol and the disadvantage is practically it is very difficult to use because uh, pre-declaring the read set and the write set before starting the execution uh, is, is very difficult in many situations or it is not possible in many situations. So due to that reason, conservative two-phase locking protocol is very difficult to use in practice and that is one of the disadvantage of this protocol. The second protocol is called as strict two-phase locking protocol. So in this strict two-phase locking protocol, uh, it, it is the most widely used locking protocol which actually guarantees strict schedules. It actually guarantees strict schedules. I'll tell you what is what do I mean by strict schedules. So actually uh, a strict schedule means it is recoverable and uh, that is it is possible for the transaction to recover from catastrophic failures and that is to recover from failures and it doesn't require uh, cascading aborts and actions of aborted transactions can be easily undone. So whenever you have a strict schedule you have that advantage. So, in strict two-phase locking protocol, what happens is the transaction, the transaction does not release any of its exclusive locks. By exclusive lock, already I told in the last video, exclusive locks are also called as write locks. So, the transaction does not release any of its exclusive locks until after it commits or aborts. The transaction does not release any of its exclusive locks. Note that I am talking about exclusive locks here. The transaction does not release any of its exclusive locks until after it commits 
or aborts that is either it has to get committed or it has to get aborted until such time the transaction will not be releasing any of its exclusive locks so such uh, the protocol is called as strict two phase locking protocol so that means let's say if one transaction has already got an exclusive lock on a particular data item and some other transaction is try to uh, trying to read that data item or write to that data item so this data item has been written by the transaction but it is not yet committed by the earlier transaction so in such a case other transactions will not be able to read or write such data items until that uh, that has that operation has been committed by the previous transaction okay that's why i say that strict tpl always leads to a strict schedule for recoverability so i'll tell you again so if if a particular transaction Uh, if a particular transaction has already written an item but it has not yet committed it in such a case any other transaction cannot read or write such item that has been written by the older transaction but it has not yet been committed that's why i say that static tpl always leads to strict schedules for recoverability so let's see about static schedules with the help of an example so here let's say you have two transactions t1 and t2 and let's say transaction t1 gets an exclusive lock on the data item a okay after getting an exclusive lock on the data item a uh, it tries to read the data item a and then it tries to write to the data item a so after doing that let's say a transaction t2 t2 tries to get the exclusive lock on a now this transaction t2 will not be able to get the exclusive lock on a why because already transaction t1 has got the exclusive lock on a and so t2 will be suspended and it will be made to wait by the dbms because this is strict to pl and in strict to pl t1 has not yet committed so unless even though t1 has written to the data item a it has not yet committed so any other transaction will not be able to read or write the data item a so after that uh, t1 continues its execution it tries to get the exclusive lock on the data item b and then it tries to write the data item b and then it commits the transaction so once transaction t1 commits is committed then transaction t2 which has been made to wait can continue its execution by get, getting the exclusive lock on the data item a so this is an example of the strict two phase locking protocol the next protocol is the rigorous two phase locking protocol so this is a more uh, restrictive version of the two phase uh, locking protocol that is strict to pl protocol so this one is more restrictive and it also guarantees strict schedules okay so what will happen in rigorous two phase locking protocol is a transaction t a transaction t does not release transaction t does not release any of its exclusive or shared locks as i already told you exclusive locks means write locks and shared locks means read locks so transaction t will not be releasing any of its exclusive or shared locks until after it commits or aborts until after it commits or aborts okay so so it is easier to implement than the strict two phase locking protocol because it is more restrictive variation of the strict two pl protocol so in strict two pl the transaction will not be releasing any of its exclusive locks until it commits or aborts but in rigorous two pl it will not be releasing either its exclusive lock or its shared lock until it commits or aborts so the difference between conservative and rigorous two pl is Uh, so in the beginning we saw saw about the conservative 2pl so in conservative 2pl 
um, it has to log all of the data items which it requires before it starts its execution. So I can say that in the previous video, I told you that two-phase locking protocol will contain two phases. One is the growing phase and the shrinking phase. Shrinking phase is the phase in which it unlocks its data items. So you can say that in conservative 2PL, it, uh, as soon as the transaction starts, it is in its shrinking phase. But in the case of uh, this rigorous 2PL, in the case of this rigorous 2PL, the, this does not lock any of its item, uh, it, it will not unlock any of its data items until after it terminates, right? It does not release. That means it will not release or unlock any of its exclusive or shared locks until it terminates. That is termination can be by committing or by aborting. So I can say that in rigorous 2PL, the transaction is in expanding phase until it ends. Till it terminates, the transaction is in expanding phase only. What is expanding phase? The phase in which it keeps on acquiring the locks. Okay, so in rigorous 2PL, the transaction is in its expanding phase until it terminates and in conservative 2PL, the transaction starts its shrinking phase as soon as the transaction starts. So that is the difference between conservative and rigorous 2PL. Next, we will see about some gate questions which has been asked based on this topic of two-phase locking protocol. So here, uh, first question is, which of the following concurrency control protocols ensure both conflict serializability and freedom from deadlock? Number one, two-phase locking to timestamp ordering. So we have seen the two-phase locking protocol. This protocol ensures conflict serializability. If you think of deadlock freedom, then two-phase locking protocols, except the conservative 2PL protocol, all other two variations of two-phase locking protocol suffers from deadlocks. Say, for example, if transaction T1 would have locked some data item and it would be waiting for some other data item, which is being logged by transaction T2. Same way, transaction T2 would have logged some data item and waiting for some other data item, which was logged by T1. So in that case, there is a possibility of a deadlock. So two-phase locking protocol is not free from deadlocks. And the second one is timestamp ordering. Timestamp ordering is a non-lock-based concurrency control protocol. Okay, so there is no, no transaction will be ever waiting in the timestamp ordering protocol. And so because of this, timestamp ordering protocol is the concurrency control protocol, which ensures both conflict serializability and freedom from deadlock. So right answer to this is B2 only. The next question is, consider the following two-phase locking protocol. Suppose a transaction T accesses a certain set of objects, O1, O2, O3, up to OK. This is done in the following manner. Step one is transaction T acquires exclusive locks to O1, O2, O3 up to OK in increasing order of their addresses. And then the required operations are performed in step two. And then the locks, all locks are released in step three. So this protocol will guarantee what? That is the question. So if you see this protocol, if you see the conditions for deadlocks, the condition for deadlock is mutual exclusion, hold and wait, no preemption and circular wait. So uh, if you see, uh, if since locks are being acquired, a, a T1, T acquires exclusive locks to O1, O2, O3, up to OK in increasing order of their addresses. Whenever resources are obtained in increasing order of their enumeration, then circular weight condition will not happen. And so the possibility of deadlock doesn't happen here. And also, just now we saw about the conservative two-phase locking protocol. So in the conservative two-phase locking protocol, uh, what did we see? It would be acquiring all the locks. It would be declaring its read set. It would be having a pre-declared read set and write set. And it would be uh, acquiring locks to all the items which it needs before starting its execution. And then only the execution starts. So as soon as the execution starts, it is in the start of its shrinking phase in conservative 2PL. Uh, so in conservative 2PL, inherently it's a deadlock free protocol. Okay, so if you see the question, it resembles the conservative two-phase locking protocol because first it acquires all the locks and then only the transaction starts its execution. So it resembles two conservative 2PL and conservative 2PL inherently is a deadlock free protocol. Okay, so the answer to this is serializability and deadlock freedom. This protocol will guarantee both serializability 
as well as deadlock freedom, which is option A. The next question was asked in NIE LIT scientist examination. In conservative two-phase locking protocol, a transaction should release all the locks only at the beginning of transaction. Option B, should release exclusive locks only after the commit operation. And option C is, should acquire all the exclusive locks at the beginning of transaction. And uh, option D is, should acquire all the locks, should acquire all the locks at the beginning of transaction. So in conservative two-phase locking protocol, it has to acquire all the locks, whatever locks it requires for all the data items which it wants, whether it is a read set or write set, it has to acquire all the locks and then only it has to start its execution. That is the concept of conservative two-phase locking protocol. So to do, due to this reason, so the right answer for this question is option D, should acquire all the locks at the beginning of transaction. So that is all about this video, wherein we saw all the variations of a two-phase locking protocol, as well as we saw about all the, some examples of some questions, MCQs, which were asked in the competitive examinations. If it was useful, do like the video, share and subscribe to the channel for more such videos. See you in my next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.